This is a single frame, one of 24. And if we wanted to film in slow motion, we would have to use a higher frame rate. But today we will explore how you can get slow motion when filming 24 frames per second. You could, in theory, place a 24 frames per second file onto your timeline, stretch it and get slow motion. However, because there are less frames to be interpreted than what the timeline format is, it will result in duplicated frames and a staggered slow motion. Let's visualize that. When consecutively captured images are displayed over a certain frame rate, it creates the illusion of motion. In this case, we are using 24 frames per second, and as just noted, we could slow down this clip by decreasing the speed of the video clip. However, with 24 frames per second on a 24 frames per second timeline, there aren't the available adjacent frames to display and your NLE will duplicate the previous frame. To fix this, all we would do is film at a higher frame rate then interpret the 60 frames per second clip to 24 frames per second, resulting in a smooth, slow motion. But what about using DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro's frame interpolation method, Optical Flow? Thanks to modern software and plugins that have frame interpolation, we can take a 24 frames per second shot, apply a method of time remapping, and then have it appear as if it was shot at a higher frame rate, then decreased to 24 frames per second, which gives it a fluid slow motion with none of the stuttering. However, as with all forms of digital manipulation, whether that's recovering highlights, removing audio hiss, or frame interpolation, there's usually only so far that we can take that effect before the file starts to break down. So what are the best practices for using frame interpolation? and what should you look to avoid? Optical flow is just one of few frame interpolation methods available. So let's first look at the other two. The first is nearest, and this is the default method that we have discussed. Your NLE will duplicate frames to slow the footage down. It looks cheap and ugly in most circumstances. Frame blend is a similar method in that it will duplicate frames also, but it will blend the duplicated frames and original frames together with a mini cross dissolve to smoothen the jitterness and optical flow, which is what we're gonna look at breaking today. This uses motion estimation to generate new frames from the source. So essentially the software interpolates the missing frames by analyzing and comparing the relative pixel data from the preceding and prior frame to, to create what it would assume is there. First, we're gonna have our model walk towards the camera with a relatively static background. We're gonna decrease the speed by 25%. The results here, at 25% decrease are decent. There's little to no ghost in visible artifacts present, but what if we introduce some simple cross frame movement? We can instantly see that ghastly ghost in. Why is this? It comes down to pixel by pixel data and how much room optical flow has to analyze it. If I quickly conform the subject to a shape, we can see that the movement towards the camera leaves little overall impact in how it moves through the composition versus the subject moving across the composition, which actively interacts with all areas of the composition. However, there is one way that we can negate that motion blur, and that's by moving with the subject. While optical flow interpolation works a lot better with media that contains little to no motion blur and subjects moving in front of a mostly static background. The problem is at 24 frames per second, there's still gonna be motion blur with a subject moving across a static frame. However, when I move with the subject and keep him center, it somewhat negates that. We're getting motion blur with the background, but not so much the subject as we're moving at the same speed. Now, what if we have the model do the same thing but on a background that moves sporadically and isn't static? In our case, the ocean waves. Let's look at what happens. Actually, not a lot. Uh, this is pretty decent. So is there a reason for this? In this particular instance, yes, costume. Optical flow needs to analyze the motion of every pixel for each frame. It doesn't know what the background is, it doesn't know what the foreground is, so it can struggle to separate the two and you may see some visual warping if some elements are the same color. For example, if I apply optical flow to a set of waves, we can see it doesn't really work that well due to the lack of indifference in contrast and color. But when we have that tonal separation, it allows for the data to be correctly analyzed. However, like our previous entry, even when filming a subject with strong contrast and a color difference against the background, if it moves fast through the frame, like this shot, it's still gonna cause that ghosting. So what's the conclusion in using optical flow? What are we looking to film primarily? We want our subject 
to remain relatively still with a static background. If your subject moves, try to move with them. When filming with a subject, strong tonal contrast will produce better results. For wide shots, look to make sure the area has an array of different colors and limit the speed decrease by 10 to 50%, but for minimal ghosting, look to decrease from 10 to 25%. And remember, optical flow isn't a suitable replacement for a higher frame rate, but it's a great tool to create the illusion, certainly. All right, guys, this has been Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials. Remember to do all the snazzy YouTube stuff, and I will catch you guys next time.